Uh, what's good, my people? Wolf Land Speaks back again. Um, today I saw this. Um, what caught my attention was this clip here, Stephen A. Smith uh, and uh, Kerry Champion, as well as another guy on here. I'm, I forget his name. And they were talking about the, the issue with the Los Angeles Lakers. And um, I was really disappointed in Stephen A. Smith, uh, his commentary. Uh, as well as uh, the other guy was there. It was kind of like just, I don't know, just a yes man or whatever. And um, we're going to go through this, and uh, you'll, you'll see why. You'll see my point. But on Christmas Day, the Lakers blew out the Warriors. That's great. However, LeBron went down in an injury. He missed 18 games. The Lakers plummeted in the West as, as a result, and now going from fourth out of the playoff pitcher. That was the biggest of the Lakers' injury concerns. Lonzo Ball, Rajon Rondo also missed some games, 44 combined. Uh, and James basically didn't really get to play much with those two guys. All in all, the Lakers found themselves below 500 entering the All-Star break. That's the first time that's happened to LeBron or a LeBron team since his rookie season. So they will need every bit of help from him. LeBron, what do you say on this? It's been quite a while for me um, that I've been under 500 going to the All-Star break. I don't remember the last time. So, you know, my uh, my level of intensity has to be, um, you now unfortunately for me, because I don't like to do it at such an early time, I'm a little bit different. Um, this guy, like, this is another example where LeBron is really just a, you know, pretty, well, uh, amongst the superstars and leaders that we've had in the history, I would think he's one of the worst leaders, you know, amongst those superstars, because instead of talking about, um, what the team has to do, you know, he's just reiterating how he's so not used to being in this situation and how, uh, you know, this is difficult for him because he's used to being above 500. All, all it is really is LeBron just controlling the narrative, which ultimately is going to be that it's everyone's fault other than LeBron James's fault. So by saying like he's never been in this situation, he thinks that this is some sort of uh, indictment against, you know, everyone else uh, for putting him in this situation. But it's been activated, so look forward to seeing what we can do. All right, so uh, Stephen A. Smith and Om Young Masuk, who covers the Lakers here in Los Angeles, uh, are joining me now on Coast to Coast. We're talking about the state of the Lakers, if you will. LeBron is activating early. There's much talk about him being in the playoffs if he doesn't make the playoffs. Uh, Stephen A., first off, if LeBron doesn't make the playoffs, is there a fallout for him and this Lakers team after that? No, uh, I think the fallout is that uh, Luke Walton will lose his job. A matter of fact, I, I, I'm, I'm damn near to the point where I think it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, it is, it is a foregone conclusion. Um, <clears throat> I've been on the record as stating even the beginning of the season uh, many times, especially in my, my Facebook groups and in other areas, that uh, the Lakers were going to be a mess this year. It's going to be a circus. Um, I, I figured that LeBron James would be uh, put into a situation where he's with a coach that he didn't select and if you look at the history of LeBron James, um, when he's with coaches that he had no hand in hiring or no hand in at least telling the person who does the hiring that they should hire that person, uh, it typically doesn't work out. And here you have Luke Walton, who is a guy that is about LeBron James's age, um, who was in the same draft class LeBron was in. Uh, I believe he went late, either late first round or the second round. Whereas LeBron was the number one overall pick in that draft. So the to think that LeBron would actually respect him simply because, you know, he served as an assistant coach to Steve Kerr on the Warriors, uh, a team that LeBron uh, went against, is just unrealistic. Okay, so that, that's I knew that was going to be the first issue. The second issue is LeBron is playing with younger players, which is something he doesn't like to do we know he has a history of that when he was in Cleveland instead of playing with uh an, a young Andrew Wiggins or another young player that could have been drafted uh that year when he came when they came out he elected to have um them trade that number one pick for Kevin Love so that Kevin Love could come and just serve as a floor spacer you know and who just stands out there and jacks up threes as opposed to even being the uh you know, the, 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 the down uh, post presence that and the great rebounder that Kevin Love was. I mean, think about it. Kevin Love was actually the best rebounder in the league before he came to play with LeBron James. 
Illusion. He's in a world of trouble. They've got to produce over these last 25 games. They've got to make the playoffs. <clears throat> and then after that, they've got to make a relatively decent showing in the playoffs. Otherwise, there will be a new head coach in Los Angeles for the Lakers next season. You can book it. Yeah. It's that serious. So I wish him nothing but luck because I think he's a good coach. I think he's got a lot of promise and what have you. But they've got to play better. No, you don't, Stephen A. Stop it. You're lying. You don't, you don't believe he's a good coach. Come on, man. Stop it. They're 30th in the league when you're talking about three-point uh, shooting percentage. Uh, you know, you, you, you just look at some of the things. Don't get me started with their free-throw shooting and where that ranks. I mean, LeBron James ain't even at 68%. Uh, Brandon Ingram is about at 66%. Lonzo Ball is at 41% from the free-throw line. Mm -hmm. You've got guys like JaVel McGee and Tyson Chandler in the 60 percentile. So you're struggling from three-point shooting. You're struggling from the free-throw line. you got a guy who's the best player in the world and your superstar but he's in the 16th nba season you're is he the best player in the world is he number two guy is a guy by the name of kyle kuzma who can who can play and has a lot of promise mm -hmm. but you were expecting more things from brandon ingram you ain't getting it and so when you look at all of those things right this is complete nonsense now let, let me I'm really disappointed in this analysis of Stephen A. Stephen A's here because number one, all Stephen A. is focusing on is the offensive side of the ball. You know, he's, he's focusing on uh, okay, well, they're not shooting well from the from three. They're um, not shooting well from the free throw line. While that is very, while that is true, it's also true that you can you can win, you can win in the NBA. Without that. Now, one thing you cannot win without a doubt you will not go to the playoffs with is if you don't play some damn defense. The problem with the Lakers and the problem with LeBron James. And right now, you can tell Stephen E. Smith doesn't want to talk about it. And these guys here that are on uh, these shows, with the exception of those who, you know, aren't LeBron supporters like a Skip Bayless or Ron Par Rob Parker, they will not discuss the fact that LeBron James right now is one of the worst defensive players in the league. Whether it's because he's lost his ability to do so or whether it's because he's simply not trying, it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, his lack of defense right now is causing the Lakers games. I remember the game when he played against the Sixers. LeBron James just stood right there, you know, in the paint the whole time and just let Ben Simmons get whatever he want. And he's doing this pretty much night in and night out. And there is no way in the world you will win in the NBA without playing defense. Every team that gets to the finals, every team that is a perennial winner is a good defensive team. You have to at least be top 10 or top five in the league in defense, in defensive, in defensive efficiency. And one of the teams that, uh, there's a few teams that, uh, serve as proof of what I'm saying. If you look at the uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder, Russell Westbrook, who some people call Russell Westbrick, <laughs> is one of the worst three-point shooters in the league. He's, he's, he's at an all-time low. And while they do have Paul George, uh, who is a very good three-point shooter, they're not a team that is just you know a, a top three-point shooting team, despite uh, Paul George. And... They're winning. Why? Because they're a top defensive team in the league. They're one of the best defensive teams. Okay? That right there is putting them in the playoffs. Same thing with the Utah Jazz. Not a great shooting team. I mean, they did pick up Kyle Korver. But just him, he alone does not make you, you know, uh, an awesome shooting team. And because they play defense, they put in effort every night. They dig in every night. They're, they're winning. Now, the problem with these guys, Stephen A. and this other guy, what they don't want to admit is that LeBron James is not going hard, man. He's not going hard on defense. And because he's not and he serves as the leader, this does not prompt the other guys to follow his lead. They're just not following his example, man. Or they are following his example, rather. You know, he's not playing defense, so they're not playing defense. I mean, that's just the way that works. Now, it, it definitely is one of those situations where I don't think LeBron is going to suffer because anybody with two eyes sees what they're lacking. The well, issue for LeBron... Well, yeah, another thing he said about Brandon Ingram, he's expecting more from Brandon Ingram. What the hell more are you expecting from Brandon Ingram? Brandon Ingram is scoring damn near, averaging damn near 19 points a game this year, Stephen A. All right? Kyle Kuzma is averaging 18.9. Brandon Ingram is averaging 18.7. 
And matter of fact, within since All Star break, both of them guys have averaged over twenty four points a night. What the hell is Stephen A. talking about, man? Don't get up there and just talk unless you're going to speak facts, man. What, what else you want? What that Brad Ingram got to do? What do you got to average? 30? Come on, man. On James is going to be this summer. You've got magic, L.A., Southern California, sunshine, palm trees, and everything in between. You're the best player in the world, and you can't get one of these free agents with the bevy of them that are going to be available to come and play with you? That is going to be... Well... That's something that's been the story for a number of years now, you know, that uh, players don't want to play with LeBron James. And, it, and there's a number of reasons for that. And people who actually play basketball, they understand that. They understand what's happening on the floor. They understand what the reality of their looks are going to be like. They understand that when you play with LeBron James, you're not going to run a system that is formulated by a coach, right? You're going to run – you're just going to run – Whatever LeBron James runs, okay? LeBron James is going to be the primary ball handler, and you're going to be there to catch the crumbs. So you're going to just be cutting and running. And like I said many times before, LeBron James, the way he wants to play, he might as well just be the point guard and be done with it. But he doesn't want to be the point guard. He wants to be he wants to play forward and just put up, go up there and average, you know, between 25 and 27 points a night. Then he also wants to lead the, the team in the rebounds and then lead the team in assists. You know, and he's going to lead the team in rebounds because for the most part, he wants his power forward standing out the three point line. You know, catch, catching and shooting. He doesn't really want a traditional power forward down in the post grabbing rebounds. He doesn't want a center doing that either. So, I mean, LeBron James, pretty much most of the problems he has are kind of self inflicted problem if that happens but nothing affects lebron until this summer yeah i don't think uh, if they don't make the playoffs it's some sort of indictment on lebron james at all um i this is nonsense it's an absolute indictment on lebron james we understand he was hurt those 17 games but even despite that okay there's no excuse man for losing to the phoenix suns it's no excuse for that man it's no excuse for losing to uh teams like memphis and losing to teams like uh, New Orleans, especially with Anthony Davis running 20 damn minutes. It's no excuse for losing to the Atlanta Hawks, man. Come on, man. When you're talking about a guy's the GOAT and many of these people who say he's the greatest, you're saying he's better than Michael Jordan. Do you understand better than Michael Jordan doesn't lose to the Atlanta Hawks? Better than Michael Jordan doesn't lose to the damn uh, Grizzlies. Better than Michael Jordan doesn't lose all these damn games, man. Come on, man. Makes some sense. And, of course, it's an indictment on him. If if they If they were to win... He would get all the praise. They damn sure wouldn't be saying Kyle Kuzma is balling. They wouldn't be saying Brandon Ingram is balling. What they'd be saying is that LeBron James has done it again. All right, so in the same vein, when he fails, what we're going to say is that LeBron James failed. He didn't do, get it done. Come on, man. Let's be consistent. Do you think this summer is huge for LeBron and Magic Johnson? And I don't even think if the Lakers don't make the playoffs, it doesn't affect what they do in free agency. They're still going to go after their stars, and I don't think it's going to deter stars from coming. Stephen A. is right. If the Lakers do not make the playoffs, Luke Walton and this coaching staff is likely probably gone. But that's a foregone conclusion, yeah. is it not? And I think He's the coaching staff no understands what. what they probably have to make it to the second round. Luke Walton has been a dead man walking all year, okay? To, to not get fired, this guy got to damn near win the, win the damn championship. Come on, man. Or deeper to keep his job. Uh, to make a run. And listen, if the Lakers do somehow find their way in, not in the eighth spot, but in the seventh spot and somehow get Denver or Oklahoma City, I think they're going to be relaxed, relieved, and then they could probably make an unexpected run. But in order to get to the playoffs, they might have to go 18 and... Listen, there is no way this Laker team would beat OKC or Denver. Hell no. OKC and Denver, especially Denver. Denver is far too disciplined for them. I know they think LeBron James is going to do this activation thing and he's going to go up there and average 45, 18, and, and 10. All, but you know what? I'm not sure he can do that anymore, honestly. And even if he does do that, if you don't play defense, there's no way you're going to beat a team like Denver because they put up too many points. Simple and plain. You'll never beat a team like Denver that's disciplined without playing defense. And you won't beat OKC either. Because these guys play defense, man. Seven down the stretch. And we've seen the Lakers blow games to the Knicks, the Hawks, horrible lottery teams. They have given themselves no room for error down the stretch. Prior to the All-Star game, that was a huge indictment against Luke Walton. 
They've gone. They've lost four of their last five and five of their last seven. The two victories that they had was overtime against the Clippers and a buzzer beater against Boston by Rondo. Five games they lost. They were blown out by 42 at Indiana. They were blown out. See, this is the shit I'm talking about, right? All right. We all know the whole fiasco that ha that went down surrounding Anthony Davis and them trying to get him, all right? I'm sure LeBron James and Magic Johnson, you know, over the offseason sat down over some spaghetti, right, or whatever, and they were discussing, you know, how we're going to get LeBron James here and how we're going to build a winner here. And a big part of that discussion was Anthony Davis, all right? Let's, let's not ignore that. Stephen A is going to sit here and talk about this is just all an indictment on Luke Walton. Okay, you're expecting this man to keep these guys motivated after it's been leaked that you tried to trade every last one of them for one player, Anthony Davis. All right, you got that. And then you're expecting, okay, on one hand, uh, Magic Johnson is saying, you know, these guys just need to stop being treated like babies and focus and this and that. And then on the other hand, people want to blame Luke Walton for their, ment for their mentality. You, you, put, you put Luke Walton in a situation where it's impossible. For him to coach these guys, man. Like, it, it, if he can get any effort out of them, that's good. Because on one hand, you got LeBron James outwardly showing no respect for the teacher, blow, respect for the coach, blowing off his calls, all that kind of stuff. Setting up trades over, you know, over his head. Like, you got Magic Johnson that don't show him any real hour support. And then you got the damn uh, uh, people expecting Luke Walton to just, despite all of this that's going on, to somehow still coach these guys and keep them motivated to go play. Come on, man. I, I mean, let, let, let's be real. I'm not saying Luke Walton is some great coach. He isn't. But I'm also saying, you know, there's no way in this situation he's going to get a fair shake. There's, like, absolutely no way. It reminds me of, like, um, remember the Titans, okay, when when um, Denzel Washington was told, okay, you lose one damn game, okay, then you're fired. I ran out of the building by the Sixers as well. People looked at that. LeBron looked at that. You look at Luke Walton. We know what he did as an assistant in Golden State when he filled in for Steve Kerr when Steve Kerr was out because of health issues. He was phenomenal. That got him the Lakers job. A matter of fact, I'm here to tell you, when Magic took over, if Luke Walton, he had decided at that moment, I want to go in a different direction, Luke Walton would have had the job the next day because the Charlotte Hornets would have hired him. Right. Michael Jordan and Mitch Kupcher, they would have hired him in a heartbeat. Luke Walton would have been their coach, all right? But he's... Yeah, I, I don't know about that either, Steve, uh, Stephen A., like, how do you know Michael Jordan uh, was impressed with Luke Walton because he was able to uh, be, he was an assistant with the Warriors? How do you know that? Stayed here. Now you have a situation where you have a great player like LeBron James, along with his camp and others, speculating about what kind of muscle he has as a coach. It's got, and he is not Magic Johnson's hire, so Magic Johnson is not going to upset the apple cart per se by getting what kind of muscle he has as a coach. Right, he had nothing to do with all of them failing to trade half of the damn team for Anthony Davis. He had nothing to do with that. I mean, what kind of muscle do you expect him to have? Come on, man, make some sense with your argument, Steve. Rid of Luke Walton, but if Luke Walton does not make the playoffs, mm -hmm. he is gone. I am guaranteeing you on national television, he will not be the head coach of the he, Lakers. Even if they do make, but the if playoffs. they make the playoffs and he puts forth a good showing, Kerry, then you gotta consider. You gotta give kiss. him consideration okay. for that. You can't just sit up there and say, "Oh, he's gone no matter what." That's not true. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't make the playoffs, you can bet the house. Yeah. And There's going to be a new coach next year for the Lakers. But to be fair to him, he hasn't had a full roster. He hasn't. It's not And his every time somebody comes back, somebody's out. Absolutely. And listen, when they get Lonzo Ball back, and I, I texted with somebody from Lonzo's camp who said... None, none of that even matters, sir. They, they're they're going to fire him because LeBron James doesn't like him as a coach. Period that there's no timetable for his return yet he's still aggressively rehabbing once he comes back there's going to be an adjustment period and they don't have any time to adjust i, I go a step further home luke walton is some in most of the nba in most nba circles we all know luke walton's getting a bad rap because mm -hmm. if you look at this roster sure i mean that's a lot i mean that's a lot to ask what he can't make shots for you now i mean we've we've seen i mean the lakers at times have resembled construction sure. workers brick laying going all over the place Wait. so so
All right, so now uh, Stephen A. is saying that uh, maybe Luke Walton is being unfairly treated. I mean, you know, which one is it? I, I guess maybe he's just relaying that they're going to fire him anyway, which is what I'm saying. It really doesn't matter how he performs. They're anything short of, like, uh, just going to the f uh, finals or at least the Western Conference finals, uh, he's pretty much he's pretty much cooked because LeBron James doesn't like him as a coach. LeBron James like he likes to have a coach that's kind of like a sycophant, you know, like a like a uh, Ty Lue, <laughs> you know how he was. We can't sit up there and look <laughs> what? At, at Luke. We can't look at we can't look at Luke Walton and blame him. But well, you know, there you have.